Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here and welcome to the Canon XF400 and XF405 video training series. In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about key features of the new camera system, so let's get started. So the first thing I wanna do is talk about the only difference between the XF405 and the XF400, and that is this, the 3G SDI terminal. And what that's giving you on the XF405 is it's giving you full HD, 10-bit, 422 uncompressed output, which you can use for broadcast applications and also external recording if you are in fact doing full HD. So while the only difference between the 400 and the 405 is that 3G SDI terminal, everything else about the cameras is the same. And what's really exciting for me is this is the first XF series camera that is UHD 4K. And not only do we have the ability to record internally to two SD cards in UHD 4K and Full HD as well, we have the ability now with the HDMI 2.0 terminal to output 8-bit uncompressed UHD 4K from the camera system up to 60p. Additionally, this HDMI 2.0 port on the XF400 and of course the 405 is capable of outputting 10-bit Full HD uncompressed. So it's a UHD 4K camera, but what's inside of the camera and what makes it special? Well, there's a few things for me. Number one is the fact that this camera has dual digit DV6 processors. And if that sounds familiar, it's the same processors that's in their Cinema EOS C200 camera system. So we have the DNA of a Cinema EOS camera in a compact XF series camera system. Now the sensor is different, it's not a super 35 millimeter sensor, it's a one inch brand new CMOS sensor. And it is really, really great in low light. And because it is a larger sensor, we're also seeing a shallower depth of field in the camera system, more selective focus capabilities. So this is also the first XF series camera and the first ENG style camera from Canon that includes dual pixel CMOS autofocus. And this is something that I've been using in Cinema EOS cameras since the C300 and C100 series came out. And it really can make a big difference, especially when we're in small to no crew production environments. Now, beyond the dual pixel CMOS AF, we also have a brand new lens, a 15 times optical zoom in the camera system. What I really like is it is a 25.5 millimeter on the wide end equivalent and then all the way to a 382.5 millimeter on the long end. And when we're using this lens in full HD, there's a couple other tricks that the camera has in terms of being able to get up to a 30X on your zoom. Unbelievable in terms of picture quality, and it'll be something that we cover in another video in the series. Let's also talk about frame rates. This camera is capable, full sensor readout, at 120 frames per second in Full HD and 60 frames per second in UHD 4K. I also love the fact that this camera system is incredibly small and compact. It's one of the things that people love about the XF series. So what I'm gonna do right now is just quickly show you how to build up the camera. It's very, very simple, so let's do that. So there aren't a lot of parts to put the 400 and 405 together, and that's a good thing because we want a small, compact camera system. But what parts there are, I'm gonna cover right now. So we have the lens hood here, and that just goes and attaches directly to the camera body, like that. It has a built-in lens shade, so we don't have to worry about losing our lens caps with the camera system, which I like very, very much. And in this basic configuration, we do still have a built-in microphone in the camera body. And if you take a look at the camera like this, it's really no bigger than a DSLR with let's say a 24 to 105 lens. So this might be a configuration that you would use if you were shooting in sort of a more stealth mode, but it's also great for small gimbal systems. And a lot of people love to shoot on small gimbal systems. And this might be the way you'd wanna shoot with the camera that way. Then beyond that, we have the handle unit. And the handle unit is giving us a lot more in terms of what we get with the camera system. It is obviously where we are getting our two built-in XLR inputs. We also have our audio controls on this side here. 
There is an infrared light built into the handle unit and a tally lamp. We also have this shock mount, which can be removed if you want it to be smaller even than this. And we also have a handle unit zoom rocker here and a start stop record button. And to attach that to the camera system, it's very simple. We just slide that into the hot shoe here and we'll go ahead and tighten that down. And then there are two captive screws here on the back of the handle unit and we'll go ahead and tighten those down as well. And you can use just a flat head screwdriver if you want just to turn them a quarter to a half a turn once you've basically hand tightened those. So there's your handle unit attached to the camera system. Also comes with a small remote control unit, which is great, especially when you're doing ENG style work as a single operator. And the battery itself has been very well thought out. And the reason I say that is because we are tripod mounted here and it is very, very easy to attach the battery when it is tripod mounted. And then there's just a little release here and you just pull that down and you remove the battery. Now, speaking of batteries, this is a 4K UHD camera system and it has dual digit DV6 processors. When you're shooting in 4K, that's using a lot of processing power. So batteries are going to deplete relatively quickly. My recommendation to anybody that's shooting with a 4K camera system is make sure you have at least three or four, in this case, Canon batteries, a couple of extra chargers. The camera itself comes with this power supply, which pulls double duty. When the camera is on, it is powering the camera system off of mains when you're using it. When the camera is off, it is charging the battery that's inside of the camera system. But again, please do get a couple of extra chargers and at least two or three extra batteries if you wanna shoot all day long with a camera system like this. Now I wanna to talk to you about some of the external buttons and other features of the camera, so let's go ahead and do that. Now that we've talked about the handle unit and what that gives us in terms of functionality, it's time to talk about the camera body and some of the key things that are on there. Let's start over here with ND filter. We are borrowing in the new XF400 and 405, the ND filter system that comes from the Cinema EOS camera. So it's a turret style ND filter system. Um, there are four stages. Obviously the first stage does not have any ND at all. And then when we activate with the plus button here, we are activating first stage a quarter ND. So it's letting a quarter of the amount of light into the camera system. Then when we hit it again, we are changing over to a 1 16th. So we're letting in a 16th of the light into the camera system. And then one more time to that last stage and we are letting in a 64th. So it's a 1 64th of the light coming into the camera system. And that would equate to two, four and six stops of ND when we're talking about ND with the camera. Additionally, on the left side of the camera body, and the reason everything lives here is so that as a single operator, you can get to it very easily. We have a rocker switch here, which goes between focus and zoom for this focus and zoom ring. And then we have this custom dial here, which we can program for iris, shutter, and gain in most shooting situations. And when we press that button there, then basically what's gonna happen is we can actually assign that dial very easily to different functions. So mainly you wanna leave it in TV, ABM, but I could also see for myself as a shooter, switching that to gain in certain situations. So there you go, that's the custom button and how that works. And we also have a sixth assignable button on the camera system, which is right here. And currently it's being assigned to photo. And again, just understand that for most of the functionality of this camera system, we're using the touch screen to get to different things. On the inside of where the touchscreen is, we also have some additional buttons here. So let's take a look at the pre-record function on the 400 and 405. On the left-hand side of the camera body, you have assignable button number three, and that by default will turn on and off the pre-record function. And basically what that means is anytime you hit the record button on your camera system, it will backtrack and record the last three seconds of anything that has happened and then continue recording from there on out. So anytime you are in a wait and see situation, when you are waiting for something to come into the frame and you don't know when it's gonna happen, definitely activate the pre-record cache function on your camera. We also have our play last clip button, 
we have our display button where we can toggle between our displays. And then very importantly here, we also have a switch which we can turn on at any point and we can turn on infrared recording. We'll talk about those features in another video in the series. This is also where we access our camera off and media on the left side of the camera. Uh, obviously battery. We also have our menu button here on the back of the camera along with a joystick to navigate through that and we'll talk about that in another video. And just past the battery port here we have a remote terminal which we'll talk about in another video in the series, our headphone jack, and of course our power in. I do also wanna mention here that there is a built-in electronic viewfinder in the camera system, and that is a viewfinder that can actually rotate up into position. It has a built-in diopter, and it can very easily just go back into the camera. And then as we continue to rotate, we have a record start stop button, another assignable button here, which is number five, which is by default set to magnification. So when you are using the camera, either with the touchscreen or the EVF, you can very quickly go ahead and magnify for your focus. And then as we get in here to the handle, we have a zoom rocker here. We also have our SD card slots for our two card slots, which again, we'll talk about in a future video. And over here in the front right hand side of the camera system, we've already talked about the fact that the 405 will include the 3G SDI terminal. We have an ethernet terminal, which again, we'll talk about in another video, HDMI 2.0 out, USB terminal, and also a 1 8 inch mic terminal here. So if you wanted to use something like a smaller microphone without the handle unit, you could do that. So that's an overview of the key features of the Canon XF400 and 405 camera system. Thanks for watching.